Let's try to make sense of the formula for the del operator in polar coordinates. So if we first look at the formula in Cartesian coordinates, we see that the, the variables are completely independent from one another. There's an x term with, a, with an x hat. This is the unit vector in the x direction and then a partial with respect to x. And then there's the same thing, but, but substitute y's in everywhere. And if we were in more than two dimensions, there would be a z term, an identical looking term except with z in it. And, and you could even go more if you wanted. But in Cartesian coordinates, every, every term is completely independent, which is nice. Now, if we look at polar coordinates, that's almost true. Things, things look somewhat similar. We have a row, row term here, and rho is the, uh, the distance uh, from the origin in polar coordinates. And um, then we also have a theta, theta term. And theta is the angle measured from the x-axis. But if we look closely at this theta term, we realize that actually there's, there's a row in here. Something, for some reason, this, this variable crept in. So things aren't quite as neat as they were in Cartesian coordinates. So let's try to, try to understand that. Now the first thing I want to do is make sense of these unit vectors, rho hat and theta hat. Let's talk about rho hat first. So if we're at a certain point in our coordinate plane, the, the rho hat unit vector is a, is a unit vector. It has, it's a vector with length 1, and it's pointing in the rho direction. So what is the rho direction? Well, if we increase rho, we go this way. So, so let's call that the rho direction. So this right here that I'm drawing, this, this little vector from this point, uh, this, this is rho hat. And it should, it should have length 1. I may not have drawn it uh, quite right here. It looks like I didn't. But... Uh, it should be length 1, and it's pointing in the row direction, which is the direction uh, we would be traveling if we increase rho. Now let's look at theta hat. So theta, very similarly, is a unit vector. It's a vector with length 1, and it's pointing in the direction we would be traveling if, if we increase theta. And what direction is that? Well, if we increase theta, this whole thing will rotate around, and, and right, right at the moment we start rotating, We'll be, we'll be traveling uh, in this direction. Um, I'm going to redraw that in, in this direction. So it's, it's perpendicular to rho hat. So that's nice. Our, our unit vectors are perpendicular to each other, which makes things nice. Uh, but the downside of polar coordinates is that as we, as we move these, these vectors, these, this rho hat, rho hat and theta hat unit vectors, actually change direction. So let's look at another point. Uh, if we look at a point, say, up here, the direction we would have to move to increase rho is now, is now this direction. So this would be a new rho hat. And I'm not using my colors consistently, but hopefully it's not too confusing. Uh, so so this, this is the rho direction for this point. For this point, the, the rho direction is a little bit more vertical. And similarly, the uh, the theta hat direction is, is perpendicular, and it's a little bit more horizontal now. It's, it's now pointing more, more to the left because we've rotated some to the left. So that's the downside of these uh, unit vectors in polar coordinates, but it's still a useful coordinate system uh, when we're working with something that has some sort of circular symmetry to it. Now that we've talked a little bit about the unit vectors and hopefully made sense of them, Let's look at this one over row term and figure out why the heck why the heck is it there? And we're not going to derive this. You can you can look and find some 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 long derivations that have lots of derivatives, lots of algebra involved, just to get this little one over row here. But in this video, I just want to try to develop some intuition for why it's there. And in a future video, we might we might actually uh, derive this thing so we know it's exactly this. So if I have a point. So let's call this our origin, and say I have a point in, in polar coordinates. So maybe I'll, for reference, draw the x-axis and the y-axis. Uh, but anyway, so this is, so this distance again is rho. It's just like over here. And then we have some angle, angle theta. What happens with this given rho if we increase theta? Uh, so I'll draw another point, hopefully... Hopefully the same 
distance from the origin, we're keeping rho constant, and we're just we're just rotating, we're, we're increasing theta. So we see if we increase theta by, by this much, so we've we've a little more than doubled theta, our theta value here. Uh, so when we did that, this point, this we could think of it as a particle moving moving through space, this has traveled through this arc length. And that arc length has to do with the rate at which things change when you when you change theta, which is what this partial derivative uh, tells us. Whatever the value or the function we get from this from this partial derivative when we operate on something, um, that's, that's the rate at which things change as theta changes. If things change faster, we'll go through a larger arc length. If, the, if things change more slowly, we'll go through a smaller arc length. So let's, let's now look at another point. Let's increase rho now. Increase rho. We increase rho, uh, so the point's this far. Rho is, rho is about twice as big. What happens? Uh, well, when we rotate through theta, I'll extend this one as well. So assuming these are about equal in rho, we see that to go from this point to this point, if we increase theta by the same amount, we will go through this arc length, which is quite a bit larger, roughly twice as large as this other arc length. So we can see from this that the rate the particle moves as theta changes actually depends a lot on rho here. And in fact, we can write a formula for this. Again, we haven't really proven this formula necessarily, uh, but the formula for the arc length, I'll just write it out, arc length, arc length uh, equals, so arc length equals uh, the, the rho, so the radius of, of, of the circle you're traveling on, or the distance from the origin in this case, uh, times the change in theta. So we've, we've moved through this angle theta, and this, if this is in radians, then, then there's no extra factor here. But anyway, it's, it's just this simple formula. The arc length is rho times the change in theta. So we can see here that the, the arc length is actually directly proportional to, to the radius, or to the distance from the origin in polar coordinates. So to make up for that, we put this 1 over rho in this formula, and that makes it so that this term doesn't actually depend on rho as a whole. This part, this part right here, or, or really, I guess, just the partial derivative here, does depend on rho. But we can divide by rho or multiply by 1 over rho to make it so that this term as a whole doesn't depend on rho. And once we do that, now we have something a lot closer to what we had in Cartesian coordinates. These two things will behave in the same way. Each variable will have its own term in, in this sum or in, or in this vector that's independent from the other variables. So hopefully that helped you make sense of why this, this 1 over rho is here in this, in this formula. And in a future video, we will derive this thing and show that this actually is 1 over rho.